seems like an appropriate shirt to wear on day four of a WSOP event. I only have 18 bigs in, but that has 100 minute levels. I bet you there are sit and goes somewhere online that have 100 second levels. Well, it's not the hottest it's been since us getting here, but I wish it was still like 80 at 11 in the morning instead of like what I assume is 95 or so. Makes a pretty big difference. Day four, it's a new day for me. Um, you know, it's funny. Last night I was feeling pretty down about my stack and then I walked out here and Pretty instantly, I just kind of remembered the thought process I had yesterday about just being grateful for what I have. It's kind of a big deal, so pretty happy and just kind of psyched to be here, to have chips and be going to day four of a World Series event. I know no matter what happens, um, I've played some of my best poker to get here. I can be super proud about that. And while I'm pretty far from a major score still, booking the 10K right here puts me in really good position in terms of my summer because I've still got um, multiple events to go. And on top of that, I'm almost break even on the stake now. <laughs> just saw some guys with vlogging gear over there. I'm just over here on my iPhone, casually using my iPhone earbuds. But basically what I'm trying to say is, no matter what happens today, <laughs> unless I make some gigantic mistake very early, can't really have any regrets about this experience. It's been a blast. Oh, yes, yeah. 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 Oh, 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 just recording on my DSLR and the iPhone for the audio. So uh, let's get into some day four hands. Uh, came into day four shorter than I started day three with in chips. Uh, started day three with 353,500. Came into day four with just 290K. Um, the starting level was 8K, 16K with a whopping 2K ante. Uh, to put that in perspective, the big blind is now almost as big as the starting stack for this tournament. So when you get to that point, you know, you're just basically putting a starting stack in pre-flop blind. You know, you're pretty far in the tournament probably. Because I started the day so short, a lot of my strategy had to revolve around shoving, uh, whether that be open shoving or three bet shoving. And a lot of that is not just situation dependent, it is card dependent as well. And so uh, a, lot of, a lot of the first couple orbits was just paying attention to what was going on around me. Didn't get any hands to shove. Uh, ended up chipping down to about 200K before I even saw my first spot. 56 players remain. Uh, I came in in the bottom 10 and chipping down to 200K means I'm probably in the bottom like seven to five players to remain. I think a couple players busted out quickly. So I made a pay jump without even playing a hand, uh, but it wasn't for a lot. It was like 1800. And you know, it's not really what I'm playing for. I am trying to make the final table, make something happen. So in this hand, uh, the, under, the under the gun player makes a standard open to 36K. Folds are under the cutoff, he flats. 
This player has been flatting off of a very short stack. He's one of the few players who came in with close to as few chips as I did. But he's been flatting min raises and close to min raises uh, in the big blind, clearly with weak hands, so I don't think he's necessarily strong here. I looked down at Ace Jack of Hearts, and I am well under 20 bigs at this point. I think in I think in normal circumstances this would be a pretty easy snap shove. There were a couple things that made me hesitate though. First, my impression of the Undergun opener is that he's playing tight. He does have a lot of chips, but he hasn't seemed to have been getting out of line. Uh, I think he's playing kind of straight up. And if I remember correctly, he wasn't one of these sickos with like 3 million in earnings. So I have no reason to think that that expectation is wrong. The next part of this was a expectation that's cut off with fold, so it's going to be a little more profitable to shove than it might otherwise be. Um, but then I, I had a just a feeling. Um, it seemed like under the gun was very strong. Perhaps he's opening ace ten suited and above under the gun, and he's certainly opening like most pocket pairs under the gun with his stack size. But the vibe that I got was that he was top heavy. He was top heavy when it came to that range. And so I thought he might only have in this exact spot something like tens plus and ace queen plus. And suddenly I'm doing very, very badly against that range. And I just decided to let it go. I mean, I don't think this is a, you know, a world class fold by any means, but I, I, it was a tough fold for me at the time. I think past me, I would have just seen the ace jack of hearts and gone with it, and that would have been that. So I uh, torturously made the fold. The big blind ended up shoving uh, for something like 15 or 20 big blinds. It wasn't a lot, but it covered me. And under the gun snapped it off, the cutoff folded. The under the gun player woke up with pocket queens, and the big blind woke up with Ace Queen. Now, this is a little bit results oriented. Uh, I'm obviously not always going to run into the two exact hands that have me in pretty much the worst shape possible, uh, but it was very gratifying to see uh, Under the Gun show up with a hand that I'm, that I'm kind of crushed by. Uh, the board ends up running out so the Queens win. I would not have been able to win that pot. I would have been out of the tournament in something like in something like 54th place, 53rd place. So that right away felt like a win. I felt like I was on borrow time after that for sure. In this next hand, uh, there's an under the gun open to 35K. It folds to me in the hijack and I have ace 10 of spades. I think I must have gotten a walk or something prior because uh, I ended up having 217K here with ace 10 of spades. Uh, I shove over his open and he ends up tank folding. Pretty good result. Uh, I'm not really like excited to get a call with this hand. Uh, it's definitely always better to take down the pot, pretty much, unless I see he has like ace nine or something like that. In this next hand, the blinds have gone up. They are now 10k, 20k with a 3k ante. I have chipped down once again, just kind of patiently waiting for spots. The table's pretty active. More people are busting out. I think we might be at another pay jump by this point. I look down at ace deuce offsuit with just a hair under 10 big blinds. Shove it. We get kind of bad news when the small blind cold calls. Uh, typically, if the person's not last to act and we get called, we're going to be behind here. Uh, occasionally, we might get called by a king queen or a king jack from a big stack or something like that. Uh, but that's that's best case scenario. Big blind ends up folding and the small blind turns over pocket jacks. So not the worst shape we could be in, but certainly going to need some help. The flop is pretty bad for us. It's 10-7-6. Uh, my ace is still alive, but that's pretty much what I'm going for now. Just two more cards to come. Turns the four diamonds. Doesn't bring me any help. Uh, I am at this point out of my chair, uh, doing what I call the suck out dance. Uh, you know, you got you got your backpack ready to go. You got your hoodie on. You're out of your chair. You're just ready to leave. You know, it's like they'll call a payout. You're ready to go. But then the prettiest card in the deck hits the river. It's the Ace of Spades. I'm still in. Just two hands later, Faro's Jaka, who's on my immediate right, opens under the gun to 45k. Now, 
This is a tight player. He's solid. I think he's opening a little bit tighter than normally on this table. Uh, and so, and he is under the gun. Normally I wouldn't look for a lot of shove spots against him, but I look down at Ace-King offsuit. It's always going to be a spot to rip it in. Uh, I shove, folds back around him. He insta-calls and I'm worried for a little bit that I am just stone cooler here. But he also has Ace-King. Board runs out clean. We chop up the blinds and annies. I chip up just a little bit, but I'm still in. In this hand, I think I must have gotten a couple other shoves through or something like that because I'm sitting on 580k. I open pocket 9 to 40k in the cutoff, folds to the big blind who thinks for a little while and just makes the call. The flop comes jack 5 4, all hearts, and he checks to me. I do have the 9 of hearts, and I think there's a lot of value in just betting, taking the pot down, and since I have the heart to back me up, I think it's an even better spot. I go ahead and see bet 40,000 and he calls pretty quickly. The turn is the ace of spades and he checks. I think this is a particularly bad card because uh, there's definitely a lot of times where he might not three bet a weaker ace out of the big blind. Uh, and if he has just the ace of hearts, he could just check call this flop with a flush draw and over. Um, so that hand's now beating us. Uh, Jack X is beating us and likely won't fold. Uh, so I just decided to check back and uh, kind of go from there, see if I can spike something, uh, and if it checks if it checks down, I might beat some pocket pairs or uh, like king high floats or something like that. The river's the deuce of diamonds, and he now bets 155k, which I remember thinking at the time was a pretty big bet uh, relative to the size of the pot, relative to the bet that I made on the flop as well. Immediately, my thought is, are there hands you can bluff with? Is he a guy who could bluff with those hands? And uh, you know, are there enough of them to justify calling here for a very large portion of my remaining stack? It's only, what is it, like seven and a half-ish bigs, eight bigs, but that's a large percentage of my remaining chips and calling and being wrong would be pretty bad. Uh, calling and being right would be a pretty big deal as well though, so I'm not just insta-folding here. When I think about what he has, I think he's peeling the flop with a lot of ace -X with a heart, King X with a heart, and a lot of Jack X. I immediately discard Jack X when he bets the sizing. If he's gonna value bet a Jack on the river, I think it'll be smaller. So that's a lot of value hands he can't have. However, there's not a ton of bluffs he can have either. Something like six, seven comes to mind. Maybe some gut shots that he peels the flop and plants the bluff later. But there's not a whole lot of things that he can have. And I think it looks like I have a jack a lot of the time when I check back this exact turn card because it's a good bluff card as well. So if I didn't have anything on the turn, it's possible I would bluff. I end up tank folding and he actually he ends up showing me pocket jacks, black jacks. So I thought it was an interesting bet by him on the river. I think I probably would have gotten a little smaller if I was him just to try to give me a better price. But of course he's trying to punish kind of the showdown value type hands like ace x that I check back if I do check them back and when he has jacks it's less likely I'm just holding on to a jack which he would probably think I might fold to the sizing but it doesn't matter as much when I can't have it that often. So we lose a medium sized pot there but avoid a big misstep. A uh, little time after this we are down to 45 players and I, our table breaks. So I get moved to a new table, uh, I don't really know anyone there, I rec I've recognized and played a little bit with a couple of them. but. It's kind of all new faces for the most part. There was a guy on the rail who kind of came over and, and shouted from the rail, Matt Vaughn is the best. I love your shirt, because I was wearing the favorable t-shirt. And I watch you all the time. Uh, I didn't get to catch your name. I was in the middle of the game. Uh, but man, that really felt good. Uh, definitely one of the highlights of the tournament. Definitely one of the highlights of the summer. For me so uh, thank you that was awesome definitely got me a couple weird looks from the table who obviously none of them have any idea who I am uh, but that was pretty sweet I'd like to point out real quick that there are a decent number of hands that I actually leave out here uh, just because I didn't think they were that interesting to talk about it would have been really short to add I guess but just spots where I am three bet shoving over somebody who I think is weak in particular there's a guy on my right who has been opening a decent amount and uh, I've seen him three bet a couple times in spots where I thought he was weak. Um, and so 
you know, I've, I've been three bet jamming on him like once every two orbits or so. Like it, it's not like a planned thing, but uh, the spots have just been coming up. So that's kind of how I've been staying afloat. Um, I, I still have over 500k in this next hand. Uh, lines are up again though. They're 12k, 24k with a 4k ante. And this hand under the gun opens to 50k. I'm in the big blind. It folds around to me and I have 7-6 of hearts. So I go ahead and peel. I want to see a flop with this hand. Uh, I think we're definitely deep enough to just call. There's definitely no need to ever 3-bet here. Uh, and I should point out that this under the gun player has opened every single under the gun opportunity so far, uh, which has probably been six times at this point after getting to this table. So I don't necessarily put him on something like nines plus and ace jack plus and king queen. It can definitely be wider. I expect him to be opening like some suited ace x, some suited connectors, uh, definitely all the pocket pairs, you know, just a pretty wide range. That being said, it's hard to nail him down exactly because I haven't seen him have any showdowns from that position. The flop comes ace king five with two hearts and the ace of hearts and king of hearts are on board, which is relevant because it means he can't have an ace high or king high flush draw. It means I'm probably not gonna get dominated on my draw all that often, uh, which is good. I check, he sizes down to 34,000, which is pretty typical at this stage of the tournament. Uh, it's very easy to bet one third pot, sometimes smaller, and still get almost the same number of folds as you would if you bet 40% or bigger. Uh, so, so I'm not shocked to see him downsize from his preflop bet. Uh, especially on a board that seems like it would favor his range heavily over mine. He doesn't really need to bet as big. Now, I'm looking at this board and thinking he's not necessarily connected hard. Uh, he has a ton of bluffs. I expect him to see bet almost his whole range, if not his whole range on this board. Uh, I have one of the better drawing hands in my range, and I can have pocket fives, ace five, and probably king five suited here. Uh, so... I go ahead and check raise. I make it 134k. He thinks for a while and actually calls, which surprised me a little bit. Um, I thought that he was going to be pretty weak. He's going to fold most of the time, and so obviously the fold, obviously the fold is what I'm looking for. But he calls. The turns of five of clubs, which is kind of a weird card because it means I can't have pocket fives as often. But if I was making the bluff on the flop with five x of hearts, I now make trips. So I do actually have like several bluff combos that now become value combos on this card. Uh, and I also think that a lot of his range is going to be one pair. I think he's definitely appealing with any ace x on the flop. He's probably appealing with king x and he might even peel gut shots with like backdoor hearts. He might even peel gut shots with backdoor heart draws. So I just go ahead and rip it in. I think, I think it's a bad spot against a lot of people in a lot of situations. But because he's opening so wide under the gun, I think it's just a good enough time to rip it in. And uh, he actually folds pretty quickly, so he definitely was continuing a lot on the flop. And this next, this next hand is what I would consider to be my biggest misstep of the tournament, so fair warning there. Open queen 10 offsuit to 50k in the cutoff. The big blind 3-bets to 130k. So it's back on me. I have like 700k, and it's hard for me to really think he has a hand in this spot cutoff versus big blind. Uh, he's also doing some interesting behavioral stuff that I read into, I think, more than I should have, which is kind of where the mistake comes in. Typically, I would fold here. Suited, I might peel and just try to catch a flop, uh, play a pot in position. Offsuit, I think there's less merit to that. I end up making it 280k. If he has bluffs, he's just going to give up now. Uh, there's very few people who are capable of 5-bet shoving air in this spot when I put in so much of my stack and I don't think he's gonna be one of them. Unfortunately, we do get shoved on and I am forced to fold. He doesn't show, but it seems pretty obvious he's got something like jacks plus and ace king uh, crushed against that range. This is dying. Okay, so unfortunately uh, my camera died here uh, and I don't feel like waiting for the battery to charge don't have a spare here. So uh, I'm just gonna talk through, I'm just gonna talk through the rest of the hands uh, like this, apologize if it's shaky. So in that hand where I four bet folded to queen 10, I definitely think it was a misstep. I, I regretted making the four bet without more information about what his three bet range might really be in this spot. And the behavioral stuff, while 
The behavioral stuff, while relevant, could have definitely been deliberately false, uh, giving off a reverse tell, and it was it was pretty obvious what I was seeing, and so it seems likely that it was in fact a reverse tell with aces or kings. Uh, but there you go. You know, sometimes you you make a read and it's wrong. Uh, sometimes you pick the wrong spot. You just have to move on. The tournament's not over at this point, so. Uh, you know, I've got 500k uh, behind after that hand. This next hand, the button, who's a young guy, opens to 50k. He's clearly a regular, uh, definitely plays a lot of tournaments. Seems solid. I don't have a lot of reads on him from post-flop or anything like that. Um, but I do know that he's positionally aware. He should be opening pretty wide in this spot. The small blind three bets now to 150k, which is his standard sizing against a 50k open. Uh, I know this because he is kind of three bet happy. He has 3-bet a lot of times, and uh, a couple times where I was pretty sure he was 3-betting light, uh, but I didn't have a hand where I could really 4-bet effectively. I, didn't, I wanted a blocker, or I thought the opener was strong enough that I shouldn't. So I just haven't done that yet. I have, however, 3-bet shoved on him a couple times when he opened and I thought he was weak, so I feel very confident in this read. I think if I have a good hand here to 4-bet, I should. And my prayers are kind of answered here. I look down at ace nine offsuit, and this is, I think, a pretty slam dunk spot. Uh, even without the read that small blind is three betting light here, I think this is a profitable four bet shove with my stack. It's very, very hard for the button to have a hand that you can call with, and the small blind can have air a lot. Even when he doesn't have air, we have a ton of equity against his calling range. Uh, even if somehow my read is wrong on the small blind and he's super strong, uh, with like tens plus, ace, jack plus, something like that. We have a ton of equity against that range when called. Definitely going to take this 4-bet spot. Ship it in there. It's 600k and there's already like 260k in the middle or something like that. Uh, unfortunately, the button gives us some bad news and calls. The small blind ints the folds and we are up against ace-king. Pretty bad situation. Pretty unlucky that we run into ace-king from the button open from a guy who's competent and was opening wide. But what can you do? That's the spot we got into. The board runs out not so well for us. Uh, he ends up holding, and that's it. Out of the tournament. At this point, we're down to four tables. We've knocked a few more people out. We've made a few pay jumps. I bust in 31st. The cash was for 17491 I uh, can't really be unhappy with that. I came into the day with just 18 big blinds in a bottom 10 stack. This one, I definitely felt like uh, it could have been the time. You know, it could have been the time where uh, I'm able to, to you know, close it out in final table. Um, it seemed, seemed like my time, uh, but just not this one. Uh, so at the time of this recording, I do have a few more tournaments still to play. I'm undecided about playing the main, but I'm leaning pretty strongly toward it as I have somebody who's willing to take a pretty sizable portion of my action, uh, which means that I can take less of my action, take on a little bit less risk, but still get to play in uh, the greatest poker tournament in the world. I apologize for how spaced out these videos were. Uh, it's been a tough balance in terms of just finding the time to edit, finding the time to go over these hands, uh, while I'm in the midst of other tournaments, uh, in the midst of playing cash. I've got a 1K coming up in a few days, and then a 3K no limit hold'em in the first week of July. Really looking forward to the 3K. It's got a 15K starting stack and the same blind structure as like all of the 1K plus. So I think that should be a pretty good one. I feel strong. I think I'm playing really good. Uh, Worse in cash than in tournaments, uh, but tournaments have been my focus. I think I'm taking at least today off from playing at all. And then uh, the next time I play will probably be some single table satellites just to try to uh, win some lammers, uh, get in some good good spots against weak opponents, and uh, just try to feel like I'm getting in cheaper to some of these uh, bigger events. So... Thank you guys for watching. If you haven't subscribed, hit that button down below and I will see you guys in the next video.